problem 63 in questions and problems in the practice textbook a one kilogram ring with an inner radius of 0 0.06 meters and an outer radius of 0 0.08 is sent rolling without slipping up a ramp that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal if the initial speed of the ring is 2.8 meters how far along the ramp does it travel before it comes to a stop so there's the ramp there's the 30 degrees and there is our ring all right um, okay so what's happening here let's look at the big picture always is we can analyze this problem well first of all please try it yourself uh, stop the video and try it yourself I tell you when you try something and then you know what you know and you know what you don't know and then you can come back and uh, and see how it's done and it can really reinforce your your understanding so please go and try it okay thanks thanks for stopping and going to try it I'm so happy you did that so this um, this ring okay is rolled up a, a, a hill or what up a ramp okay until it stops it stops rolling okay so it says how far along the ramp does it travel so maybe it starts there and moves there so that is your delta x center of mass so that's really what we're looking for how far along the ramp does it travel before it comes to a stop so what are the ideas here well what we can consider here is conservation of energy okay conservation of energy that's a C so in the same way as if you take an, uh, an object and you throw it up what's what's happening is that well if you include the earth remember the earth and the ball a, a, in your system then we know that the kinetic energy we have the well the delta e is e, is delta k plus delta u remember so and um this was uh this was zero and so what we saw was that all the kinetic energy was converted into potential energy right so it had an initial velocity when you threw it up so it had an initial half mv squared and all of that initial kinetic energy was co converted into potential energy, mgh. Okay, so this is very similar. Because it's not slipping, there's no uh, dissipation of any energy. There's no increase in thermal energy. There's no source energy. Okay, so the only two guys we're looking at are delta k and delta u, even for this one. Okay, so... So we've got delta K plus delta U is zero. But what is delta K? Now we need to consider the delta K of the center of mass. That's the, um, the yeah, just the change in kinetic energy of the center of mass. It's translational, translational kinetic energy. And we need to consider uh, K, delta K rotational. So this delta K is broken up into these two components plus delta U equal to zero. Okay, so what is delta K center of mass? It's half MV final squared minus half MV initial squared. What's delta K rotational? It's half I omega final squared minus half I omega uh, initial squared. All right. Uh, and then what is delta U? Delta U is plus MGH final minus MGH initial equal to zero. Okay, so we've taken into account each of these uh, delta energies, these change in energies. Okay, but what is the final velocity? That's zero because it's come to a stop. What's the final rotational velocity? That's also zero. 
And what is the initial height? That's also zero. Okay? So we're basically left with minus half mv initial squared minus half i omega initial squared is equal to, when we take this to the other side, minus mgh final, negative, negative, negative. We can just make these positives. Okay. All right, so now, now you've got one mark, maybe two marks. Okay. So what, what are we actually looking for? Remember, we're looking for this distance here, that delta x. Um, and where in this equation here, where can we find a way to, to calculate this delta x? Do you know? Is it in the velocity? Is it in the rotational velocity? Is it somewhere here? Well, it is here. That's what we're looking for. Why? Because if we have uh, delta x, that's our h final. And uh, using trigonometry, if we calculate h final, we can calculate that distance there. All right. Okay, let's carry on with our blue. Okay, so we've got half times 1 times 2.8 squared, because that's the velocity of the center of mass. Now we've got half, but what is this i? i is the rotational velocity of this, uh, sorry, rotational inertia of this ring. And if you go to table 11.3, I know I've messed it up over here. Let me... Um, Come on. Okay. I'm going to move this guy down just so that we can look at it and we'll come back. Okay. So how do we calculate the rotational inertia of a ring? It's equal to this. Half M R outer squared plus R inner squared. That's your R outer radius. That's your inner radius. Okay, so we've got half times 1 kilogram times 0 0.08 squared plus 0 0.06 squared. And I calculated um, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram meter squared. So that is your rotational inertia for this guy. Okay, so remember 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So we put that in there, 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, what is omega? What is omega? So remember from, I think, it's e equation 12, 18. You can check me if, uh, if I'm right or wrong. But it's delta x center of mass is r omega. Remember, how did we get this? Well, we looked at... Um, if there's a center of mass of your object that's rolling, um, and that's it, cm, and that's your velocity of your center of mass, if, we, if it rolls and we trace out an arc length on the ground, as it rolls through that angle, it traces out this arc length, and we saw that this arc length is equal to um, the d displacement of your center of mass, and it's equal to r omega. Okay? So, omega then is delta x divided by r. Okay, sorry. It's the, it's the one step on from here. It's, um, this is delta v, cent uh, v center of mass is r omega. My mistake. This was r uh, rotate r theta. Okay? So if we differentiate, my mistake, I had the right equation, but you need to differentiate this equation to get the velocity of the center of mass equal to r omega. Equation 12.8 is looking at the, the displacement is r theta. If you differentiate this, its velocity is r omega. So we have omega. We, we're looking for omega. Okay? But we've got velocity of the center of mass and the r. So we put in v center of mass over here 
divided by r. Right? Squared. Because omega is the velocity of the center of mass divided by your radius. Okay, so if you've got that, now I'm going to erase that, and I'm, and I'm going to put in the, the values here. So we've got 2.8 divided by 0 0.08 squared is equal to 1 kilogram, 9.81, 8 final. And okay, so 8 final then, if you solve for this, you should get point, roughly 0 0.711 meters. And we know that if that is your delta x, and that is your height, and that is 30, then we know that delta x, which is what we're looking for, is equal to h over sine theta, it's 0.711 over sine 30, equals 1.42 meters. Okay, cheers.